So we're now getting to the point where we want to be able to work on the layout of our pages. We're understanding how to add um, HTML to our web pages and to use CSS to mark them up. So now let's start talking about the layout. And this is going to be introducing some new CSS tags, um, sorry, some new HTML tags, and then um, writing rules for those tags with CSS to be able to control their positioning. So currently, with what we've been working with, um, everything on our page has what I call upper left itis. I put some text onto the page, I put an image onto the page, everything goes to the upper left side. And I can use CSS to add margins to my body um, of the my to my body tag, my HTML tag, which is going to add um, some space here and make everything move over. And I can also add margins to the top. Um, but let's talk about ways that we can get to the next level so we could really control things. What if I wanted to have a second column here, for example? Well, with the information that we have so far, we can't do that. So let's move on. I guess before we move on, though, I just want to make sure that everyone is really comfortable with these reviews. So in terms of what is HTML, um, what does it do to the page? Is it designing the page? No. Um, where does it go in the code? So make sure that you are comfortable and you can answer all of these. So in brief uh, example of an HTML tags, we've worked with the H1 tag. We've worked with things like emphasize and bold and strong. Um, the body tag, which uh, it controls in the appearance of everything on the page, um, the paragraph tag. So what does it do on the page? It basically, it marks up everything on the page. Um, it tells the browser, hey, this is address. Hey, emphasize this text. Is it designing the page? No, it may at times alter the look of the page, but we use CSS to design the page. And where does it go in the code? It goes between the body tags. And what is CSS? Well, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet, and we use CSS to design the way those different HTML tags look. What are we targeting and what can you control with CSS? Well, that's we're targeting HTML tags so far. Soon we'll be targeting other things, and we can control things like the padding, the background color, the font type, the color of the text, um, the margin space, these are all the things that so far we've learned how to control over each one of our HTML elements. And where does it go in the code? This is going to go in between the head tags. And does it need to be wrapped in any tags? Yes, the style tag. So in terms of review, again, um, does the CSS treat HTML elements like they have a box around them? Yes. So here's my heading. And I use HTML to wrap the H1 tags around this text, and it makes it look different from my paragraph. It takes on the default style of a heading one. But CSS actually treats it like there's space all around it. So that's why I can use attributes such as padding and margins to be able to control um, if my heading has text that flows right underneath it by zeroing out the padding and margin underneath my, my heading. Um, I could also make it look like my heading has a background by adding some padding and then putting a background color to my, hat my heading. So where we're going now, so that's enough with the review, is we're going to start thinking about our page as having regions. And so here's an example of the, the way we're going to mark up our page. We have a region that we're going to talk, we're just going to talk about from the top of the page. We're going to call that a heading. And then we're going to have a section in the middle we'll call the main and a section at the bottom called the footer. So these names could actually be any, anything. This could be called cookie drops and this could be called where I put my picture and this could be called the bottom. But in terms of standards, so if you're ever going to go work in another place and you want to know kind of the standards of what these regions are called, heading is a pretty basic standard uh, main or main content and footer for the little area on the bottom where you might put like this website was designed by um, or maybe even a second navigation. These are standard names, but in terms of what they have to be called the regions, you can actually call them whatever you want. Then all of these regions are going to be wrapped around or go inside another region we're going to call container. So that's what this outside box is. And this sometimes we'll call a container, sometimes we'll actually call it a wrapper. So we're just going to create all of these regions. We're going to create these empty boxes and we're going to have all of our content actually inside of these boxes. And what are we going to do this with? We're going to do this with what's called a div. And a div is essentially just an empty box. But there are attributes we can add to a div, such as width, height, background color. We can add margins just for that div, padding for that div. 
we could write a rule that says anything that's inside this div have a particular font and use a particular size and color. So what we've been doing so far is saying if you're heading one, have this font and font and this size color, uh, this size and have this color. But what if we have three heading ones on our page and we want them all to have a different color? Well, if they're all in their different regions, now we can be more specific because it's not just the heading one, it's the heading one in the region. So for example, the heading one that's in the footer could have a different look than the heading one that is in my main area. So we're gonna use CSS to apply all of these attributes and style them. But before we can do that, because a div is just an empty box, we need to give these divs names. And we're going to do that with IDs. We're going to take the div with the ID and we're going to wrap it around our HTML tag. So here's an example. We're just looking at part of the code. Uh, here's my opening body tag. And now, so normally I would have, I um, actually probably should have started this with a paragraph, um, but I have here, it says div with an ID equals heading. And notice just the syntax that heading is in quotes. And then all of the content that is in here will be in the heading div. And then I have my H1 in here. I am inside of a heading and I'm also a heading. I close my H1 tag and then I have some paragraph. And this could continue on. I could have some images. I could have some more paragraphs. I could have some lists. And then all the way at the end, I have my closing div tag. So notice when this div tag opens, it says that it has the ID of heading. But when it closes, I don't need to include that information of ID heading. It just closes. So it's an opening div tag and a closing div tag. The opening div tag is where you put in the ID. So now we're going to go and we're going to practice doing this in Dreamweaver. And I'm going to continue that in the next video. But what we're going to do is we're going to open up a bunch of um, text already marked up. And then we're going to add the various... Um, divs and ID tags around everything.